So I watched Minari for the second time yesterday and it is phenomenal. So I thought it would be a good idea to make an analysis video touching on the meaning, messages, and symbols. Like the Minari plant, the burning produce, American values, Jacob's career, Paul's religious obligations, immigrant experiences, the snake, the grandma's health, and many more things. Thanks to the really good idea of a really smart commenter, I'm trying to do some of the Oscar nominated films. I've done Pieces of a Woman, I just did The Father last week, and now I'm doing Minari, so let me know in the comments which other Oscar nominated film you think is worth doing. I'd be happy to make a video on it. So to break down Minari today, I'm gonna use three themes. One, male American fulfillment, where we'll discuss generational male American values, Jacob's values, Jacob's priorities, Jacob's sacrifices, and Jacob's eventual obsession. Two, purpose, where we'll discuss Monica's purpose, Monica's values, Paul's purpose, and Sunja's fulfillment. And three, the immigrant experience, where we'll discuss the film's point of view, cultural mixtures, Sunja's lessons, Sunja's health, the snake, the Minari plant, and the burning produce at the very end of the film, and much more. And if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and a comment, it helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Theme number one male American fulfillment. For generations, the United States has been known to many as the land of opportunity. With cities like New York City, New York, and Los Angeles, California, we've heard countless stories of people accomplishing their lifelong dreams. And many of their stories are quite inspiring. Some started from an Ivy League dorm room, some even started in oppressed conditions, and some even started as immigrants with very little from across the world. And this alluring and tantalizing American dream has been sold to one of our main characters, Jacob. Jacob throughout this film is searching for fulfillment, and due to his absorption of popularized American values, Jacob will only be fulfilled if he can lift his family out of a lower social class through his individual financial success. We even get to see Jacob attempt to pass on his male American values to his son, David. On his break at work, we hear him say to his son, male chicks don't taste good, they can't lay eggs, and have no use, so you and I should try to be useful. In this scene, we get to witness how the popularized idea of the breadwinning male is passed on from one generation to the next, which explains how this idea is so ingrained in American culture. And the biggest mistake that Jacob makes is he ties his entire purpose of being a father to his ability to provide financially. We hear him admit this when he says in the shower, I'll take care of us. Coming to this hillbilly place was for our family. And if the farm fails, you can do what you want. You can even take the kids. This mentality allows Jacob to forget many of the other important values men should have as fathers. For example, Jacob forgets to ensure David's safety by living far away from the doctor when David has a heart murmur that concerns the family. Jacob also devotes the few resources that the family has, like water and emergency funds, to invest into his farm, which bears a very high risk. In American media, we've seen countless examples of men who have been consumed by their obsession with their financial success success that leads to their eventual downfall. For example, famously showcased in Martin Scorsese's The Wolf of Wall Street, which is based on the true story of a former stockbroker, Jordan Belfort, which is a story that's the perfect example of being consumed by the male American dream. Unfortunately, a similar situation occurs with Jacob's hunger for financial success. Nearing the end of the film, Jacob says, you go ahead and do what you want. Even if I fail, I have to finish what I started. To Jacob, if he can't succeed, there's no reason for him to have his family or anything else. This way of thinking for a lot of regular men is also displayed in the scene in the morning after David's sleepover. David's friend's dad says the previous owner of Jacob's land went flat broke. He signals that the man killed himself, and then he says, I guess that's what a man does. Theme number two purpose. Our two central adult characters in this film each have their own form of purpose. Throughout the film, we get to see how these characters clash when their purposes get in the way of each other. Jacob's purpose, which we've already established and fully expanded on, is his financial success for the well-being of his wife and kids. Monica's purpose is family connectedness. Monica's main goal as a mother is to ensure everyone in her family is safe and close to one another physically and emotionally. For example, Monica's the most eager for her mother to arrive and live with their husband and children. She says to David, mom's dad died during the war. That's why mom has no brothers and sisters. We're the only family grandma has. Monica is also the one who is most concerned about David's heart murmur. And when David fails to show appreciation for his grandma's arrival at the house, Monica is the first to stress to David how important Sunja is to her and the family's history. Monica also tries to maintain Korean culture within her family by making David eat things that his grandma has brought over, even if he doesn't like it. She also suggests at work that there should be a Korean church. 
Unlike Jacob, with Christianity being a dominant religion in South Korea, Monica is often praying and encouraging her children to pray, and she is most excited when Jacob agrees for the family to attend church. Also, after Soonja suggests that David is an American boy, Monica replies, he's not like that. He's a Korean kid. This is all to keep the family attached to their roots, no matter where they live. If the family isn't safe, nor together, Monica feels like she has failed as a mother. We see her displaying this philosophy as she claims it's her fault that Soonja had the stroke. It's my fault. This happened because I was selfish. And parallel to a scene previously mentioned where Jacob is instilling his values in the next generation, his boy David, we see Monica doing the same with her daughter, Anne. My daughter is so grown up, worrying about her mom, always looking after her brother too. And within this film, we see countless examples of how Jacob's purpose as a father and Anne's purpose as a mother, unfortunately, clash. Immediately when the family moves into their trailer, Monica feels like the guaranteed safety and togetherness of the family is threatened. Jacob, on the other hand, feels like the family finally has a chance to be lifted into a higher social class. And this is what leads to their various feuds throughout the film. They're each trying individually to fulfill their own purpose without working together to address what matters as a whole. Paul also showcases his form of purpose in the film as well. And this purpose is through his faith in God. Paul carries a cross down the long road every Sunday like Jesus before his crucifixion and helps Jacob every day with the farm. To Paul, these are God-given tasks which allow him to feel extremely optimistic even when Jacob's optimism is fading. The only character who seems to truly be fulfilled is Sunja. Sunja has fulfilled her role as a mother coming from a life that was very likely much harder than Monica's. And as a result, Sunja seems to be the only character at peace. She never gets upset at her grandkids, even after hearing the many rude remarks David makes, and she isn't even phased after David tricks her into drinking his urine. Sunja also seems to have learned the lessons that David and Monica are yet to learn. Unlike Jacob, she's appreciative of where Jacob and Monica live, and has no expectations of their financial means. And unlike Monica, she urges the two parents to give the kids more freedom, stating that getting hurt is all part of growing up. Theme number three. The Immigrant Experience. I think it's fair to say this film confidently avoids traditional structure. The film seems to purposely wander in and out of the lives of our main characters, and I think that's what makes this film so honest about the experience of immigrant families. Personally, I'm not Korean, but I grew up with immigrant parents whose first language is not English, so this aspect of the film was very relatable to me, and frankly, quite beautiful to watch. The usual household with immigrant parents is a mixture between the culture of their ethnic roots and the culture of their new home country. We can see that both Monica and Jacob have that mixture within them, but the mixture is different for each of them. And these differences are made visible between the way each of them practice religion, parent their kids, and hold on to their heritage in different ways. The kids' experience is very honest to real life as well, as we see the local kids make comments that are careless and rude when they have no idea what they are saying could be very hurtful. And ironically, yet in reality, very commonly, the kids get along very well. One thing that also makes this film so immersive and lived in is that the film is spoken almost equally in Korean and English. And if you've grown up in an English-speaking country with parents who don't primarily speak English, you will hear both languages equally throughout your entire childhood. And overall, the lessons of the immigrant experience seem to be the lessons that viewers can take away from this film. And I think it's beautifully poetic that Sunja, who is the most wise and fulfilled, is the one who causes all of these lessons to be learned by the family. When the snake appears by the stream and David attempts to scare it away, Sunja tells him not to. She prefers that the snake remain in their sight, saying this line to David. It's better to see it than to have it hide. Things that hide are more dangerous and scary. And I think this line says a lot about Monica and Jacob's marriage and their honesty with themselves. When the two of them hide their opposing views from each other and cover up their feelings with smiles, an outburst is bound to happen, which sparks a heated argument. As immigrants, it's important to be open and honest with the very few pieces of old home you have with you, which are your family members. Otherwise, like the snake, these lurking emotions will come out aggressively to bite you. Sunja also plants the Minari plant with David. The Minari plant has plenty of parallels to a successful and wholesome immigrant experience. When Sunja plants the Minari, she says, it grows anywhere like weeds, so anyone can pick and eat it. Rich or poor, anyone can enjoy it and be healthy. Minari can be put in kimchi, put in stew, put in soup, 
Minari can be used as medicine if you're sick. So our family in this film, just like the Minari, no matter where they exist, they must recognize they have more than one purpose. They need to be less conscious of social class, and they need to ensure the health of their family. Also, in an interview with writer and director of this film, Lee Isaac Chung, Chung says, The interesting thing about it is that it's this plant that will grow very strongly in its second season after it's died and come back. And so, there's this element of that in the film. It grows very expansively without doing much to it. And so it's a poetic plant, in a way, for me. This relates heavily to the immigrant experience in which the first generation is usually the one to make the biggest sacrifice. The second generation is able to take full advantage of this newfound life peace and opportunity. Chung's statement also relates perfectly with the biggest tragedy in the film, where all of Jacob's produce has been burned unintentionally by Sunja. This has taught the couple that the family can't only be connected when Jacob earns a deal with a shop or when David's health is improving. The family needs to be well connected, even when their circumstances are in the absolute worst case. But after the disaster, it's a bittersweet and poetic ending, because Sunja's health is declining just when her wisdom lessons and level of fulfillment is being passed on to Jacob and Monica. Like Sunja, they both have learned to restart with a new level of appreciation for their circumstances. Monica has learned that it's okay to pursue new opportunities in search of an even better life for her family. Jacob has learned to have better appreciation for his current life and always put his family first in the moment. And like the Minari, Jacob and Monica have grown stronger in their second season of growth after the fire has burned everything back down to zero. And in the final scene, we see the Minari flourish as the family has acquired a new level of purpose, honesty, gratitude, and trust for one another. All right, that's my analysis. Let me know in the comments about all your thoughts, interpretations, insights, symbols, and messages because this movie is loaded with so many thought-provoking layers. It's beautiful. I hope you subscribe so I can see you again. And thank you so much for watching. See you later.